What is your promise? Why are you in business? How do you expect to grow? This is The Hook, a show focused on branding, marketing, and business development. You brand to inspire, not to sell. Jason Arsmont, the marketing maverick, gives expertise to business owners, serial entrepreneurs, and anyone interested in building a stronger company brand. Creating a brand is like telling a story. You've got one shot to say it all. When your marketing works, you've got them on the hook. You're listening to The Hook, the first ever show incorporating marketing and branding, and we consider this a business solution to your everyday company needs. A little bit different take on the show this week. My name is Josh Reno. I'm the marketing specialist at Brightbox Brand Marketing, along with Jason Arsmott. He's hey, the hey. marketing maverick and the CEO of Brightbox. Uh a different show today. Yeah, a great we're back show we with have. something a little bit different. We're responding to uh, to our listeners, right? Um, I guess we should give a, a shout out, right? If you ever the show ever gets interrupted, make sure you guys do go to uh, the nine five zero or download the iHeartMedia app. You right? know, something we've never mentioned is that if you're out of town and you yeah. want to listen to us, you can always listen to us on the iHeartRadio. That's right. Our, that app or the nine five zero, you go to the website and you can listen to us anytime, anywhere. You don't want to miss it because it's. A live show. I mean, it's good stuff, right? Yeah. It's great so, for the drive. Yeah. So get to the show this week. So, you know, Josh and I talked about this for several weeks. Uh, almost our very first show, we started getting feedback and emails from folks within the oil and gas industry. Um, you know, right now the market is so volatile, and yet really there's still so much opportunity, uh, you know, just all over the place within this industry. One area of opportunity is in this uh, complex knowledge transfer that's happening, right? I mean, there's uh, so many experts leaving the oil and gas industry. They're retiring. Um, and so there's this wide range of knowledge, leadership, expertise leaving the marketplace. And so our guest today, we've got some phenomenal folks in the studio with us, have some valuable insight on the offshore oil and gas market, and are here to talk with us about what they're doing to offset this knowledge transfer. Um, so our guests today are Professor Jack Christensen with uh, University of Houston, as well as Galena Sheridan with University of Houston, and Mark Peters with Offshore Magazine. Thank you guys so much for being here. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank awesome. You for having us. Well, let's jump right into it. Maybe before we get to what you guys are doing, let, let's talk a little bit about your organizations, your groups. Um, uh, you know, Professor Christensen and Galena, I know you guys are with University of Houston, but you have a specific initiative over there, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Right. We have a, a specific initiative called the Petroleum Technology Initiative, and that was formed in 2007 um, uh, by myself and and. It was directed to try to do something in education to help knowledge transfer. There, there were a lot of um, retirees in, in Houston, um, and like myself, I worked for Texaco and Chevron Texaco for 35 years, mainly in the offshore industry. Wow, okay. And, and so what I wanted to try to do is to, um, is to reduce the time it, it was taking for, student, for people coming into the industry to create value. Right. And in that, uh, we, we have um, we got five, um, course, uh, five or six courses in, um, in the College of Technology as um, electives in the Mechanical Engineering Technology degree. Okay. And then we, we also wanted to work with industry um, a little bit to try to, um, to, to try to help companies. Companies that, uh, ta- called us. And they asked if we could help them with a number of different topics, um, drilling, offshore um, developments. Right. And so we, we, um, we, we felt that, the, uh, that Houston was such an ideal location because we have um, subject matter experts. It's Houston is the old capital of the world. We have a lot of companies. We have the university. And the question was, how could we create value between all those various groups? Absolutely. And so we we um, we did a lot of um, we we felt that some of the companies that came here would want to um, and asked us to help them with their education, their training of their uh, senior professionals. They, they, we went and talked to various companies and subject matter experts and brought these people to them and formed um, a number of different um, uh, groups and different training programs. Yeah, I mean, because this is really a complicated industry. I mean, so many people, especially young folks getting into it or thinking about going to school, it's, it's difficult to understand what part of the oil and gas industry, you know, where, where's, the, where's the need, right? Where can I fill in the gaps? I mean, from engineering to field services, I mean, it's just 
I mean, just list goes on forever. And I think most young folks have no idea all the opportunities are within the industry. So you guys really kind of help bridge that gap for students, right? Right. We do that by taking them to different companies and by bringing okay. in subject matter experts. Because you're right. There's a whole range, even from um, publications um, for, for, for writing, for legal, for um, business, for scientists. There's so many different opportunities in the right. oil and gas industry. Absolutely. And you're a professor at the, at the university, so you're teaching some of these courses, I, I take it, correct? Yeah, yeah. So I, I teach an overview, and then we, okay. for the courses that I have, we actually have subject matter experts for, from industry mm. to come in and teach Great. and teach the courses. Great. And they're in the evening, so um, people can take them after work. Okay. And Galena, you're with the University of Houston as well. You're the same department, though, correct? Correct. Uh, I began with um, University of Houston as an industry advisory board member, oh, okay. College of Technology, in 2007. And that's how I learned about uh, this initiative. And I was helping as a volunteer. And in 2012, I began a full-time employee. Uh, the main uh, objective of our uh, initiative is uh, actually to start a professional development while at school for mm-hmm. our students at the University of Houston uh, because a lot of students uh, graduate successfully however they have no clue where their formal education can be applied right right so our program helps students uh, to get a really broad perspective learn about uh, industry opportunities uh, make conscious choices choice of their future career and uh, actually develop themselves because uh, students who work with us as employees and volunteers, uh, it appeared to be having a very good jobs after all. Right, after graduation. right. Showing the initiative, get involved in learning. It's almost like a trade school. We're big fans of that. We've talked about that before on the show. I, I love the combination of kind of taking that trade school approach within a, uh, you know, a degree as well, you know, so you're really getting kind of the hands on, pr- uh, you know, practical approach to what you're going to be doing when you get out. And so, yeah, obviously that has to look good on a resume when you go out and start uh, applying for jobs that you spend a good part of your time in school really investing in what you're going to be doing as a career and showing that you're interested. So that's great. Well, Mark, it's up to you. Tell us a little bit about Offshore. (laughs) Uh, Offshore, uh, I'm the publisher of it, and um, we are part of Pinwell. We've been around for about 60 years now. Wow. Uh, Largest circulation of any magazine into the offshore oil and gas industry worldwide. 60% of our circulation is outside of uh, the U.S., so we have a large global uh, industry we're covering. Uh, in addition to the magazine, we also do six trade shows and conferences that are specialized for the That's offshore right. okay. industry. And we noticed, and I've been in the publishing industry for 30, 35 years on refining, petrochemical, pipeline magazines, uh, upstream, downstream, and now offshore, that there has been a great interest, as you mentioned, about how do people get into the industry. Right. And it's my belief that as a publisher, I need to help in some way to get younger people to realize the amazing industry that is found offshore and that it's not necessarily the uh, the bad industry. It's sometimes depicted in the industry. Absolutely. Press. Yeah, it's definitely a necessity, isn't it? <laughs> Without a doubt. And if you think about it, um, about I had dinner with somebody from Floor about – 10 years ago in Indonesia, and he was talking about how he had just been to Thailand for the 25th anniversary of them building up the offshore gas industry, and they fed it to him as a hero because suddenly people had a cheap source of energy, and it does more to change the life of poor people worldwide than anything else is a cheap, reliable source of energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, obviously, they have to take it with a sense of responsibility and do it right. But yeah, I mean, look at the the power, the impact that it has on an economy. It's unbelievable. So I'm curious. So we've got uh, University of Houston. We've got a publishing powerhouse. How did you guys originally get together? Because you're both sitting here together because we're going to talk later on about an initiative you guys are doing. But how did you guys originally start um, having communication and talking? And Go ahead, Jack. Well, we, we, we started, um, we, I, uh, my, my specialty is reservoir characterization underground, and, okay. and so we, we, um, I talked to a fellow named Kurt Albaugh, who has been tremendously helpful in, in, in this whole program and, and this initiative, and he, he was with um, Offshore Magazine as the poster editor, 
and um and so we 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 got to talking and and we 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 also um offshore in in when we had companies come in um we needed contacts and offshore Ma- magazine provided some excellent contacts for us and so we started a relationship and then we started cr- um working on a poster for the offshore oh, the famous posters okay and and w- which the, there's a whole series of posters which are absolutely fantastic and we use them extensively in our in our courses and um and so the the um so that so we started to get more involved with offshore magazine and and in starting to talk that this idea of the offshore learning center emerged yeah that's awesome i think anybody who's listening that's within the oil and gas or offshore market knows of these uh these posters that that you guys put out so definitely a a great resource tool and, and kudos for that so we got a lot to do on this show now that we've set this up, who you are and who you're with and how you got together, people want to know about the markets. You know, we got that coming up as well as uh, more in-depth analysis. We do branding and marketing, but we're stepping outside the box today a little bit with our interviews on the hook. Jason Arsmont right there. I'm Josh Reno. We'll be back in a minute. She took down a photograph of our wedding. You found us again this weekend. We are The Hook, always available on our website, thehookradio.com. And don't forget, you can listen to us live anywhere you are. If you go to the iHeartRadio app, my name is Josh Reno, along with Jason Arsmott, the marketing maverick, and a, a special show this week that we have going on. Well, and gas show. Mm-hmm. We're back in studio uh, in this segment with our, our same guests. We've got Professor Jack Christensen and Galena Sheridan with University of Houston and Mark Peters with Offshore Magazine. So we were talked a little bit about uh, the organization that you guys are with and your background, and I think our listeners will uh, <laughs> see that you're definitely qualified to talk about this market space, and we're excited to get into the kind of the guts of what it is you guys are doing. But maybe before we do that, let's talk a little bit about um, kind of the nature of where the environment of where the industry is at right now. It's um, it's kind of volatile. It's it's down, obviously, right? But um, maybe give us a little insight on your perspective, Mark. Where where's the industry at? Where are we going? Well, the industry had fairly stable oil prices for four or five years of um, around uh, between 90 to 110, which gave confidence to the majors and the international oil companies. No uh, one was complaining then, right? Nobody was complaining. <laughs> uh, and the the issue that developed was new technology, uh, hydraulic fracturing mm. in the U.S. to develop shell plays. So suddenly, where we had seen decline in oil production for 30, 40 years, we started seeing it picking up. Right. And it picked up significantly, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million barrels a day. Yeah, I mean, oh, we started seeing a big flood out, like, you know, West Texas, even up in Colorado. I mean, all of a sudden, all these advanced fracking technologies opened up all these new reservoirs, right? I mean, it was just... All these new reservoirs, Eagle Ford down in uh, South Texas, the Marcellus and the Utica. Yep with natural gas. And so suddenly there's a flood of new energy on the market. And the the Saudis and OPEC had been cutting production so that they could help sustain the oil prices. A year ago, uh, November, almost a year, uh, the Saudis said they were going after market share. Ah. And the thing I've heard the Saudis over the last 30 years is they, when they say they're going to do something, they do something. So they started producing more oil. Okay. And that extra oil uh, then put the global market in surplus and the price started dropping. And we saw a low reached back in August time frame. We're currently around 45, uh, blipping mm-hmm. around, which is uh, $65 off what it was averaging. So that is causing consternation, to say the least, right, right. amongst oil and gas companies and what they're going to do. The new volatility in oil prices is what has occurred is the U.S. will probably become the swing producer in the market and that when uh, prices start going up, 
our production will increase. Our production is down due to the drop in oil prices. Mm -hmm. The number of rigs are down. The number of major projects being explored and looked at are down. So we will see a decline in production, not only in the U.S., but other non-OPEC countries. Right. You know, I'm really curious to see the um, kind of the impact it's going to have with, you know, Russia moving into the Middle East. Um, you know, I, I don't doubt that there's some oil, um, you know, at stake there in supplying and partnering with China as well. So I think right now there's so many kind of unknowns. It'd be, it'd be really interesting to uh, see how that kind of shakes out for sure. Well, there's always been what they called a war premium. When there was yeah. something going yeah. on in the Middle East, that has gone away. And that's one – because believe me, the – the uh, violence going on worldwide is probably higher than it's been. Mm -hmm. uh, but because we have all this extra oil in the U.S., it's not as big a concern anymore as it used to be. So that war premium has gone away. Right. The Russians, though, are not in uh, for the oil. They have plenty of their own. Uh, they are one of the largest producers in the U.S., or in the world, beating both the Saudis and the U.S. Wow. So, wow. And so I guess if we could just distribute more of ours, it, it definitely it, would help. And that's why the discussion about export of crude oil and the LNG terminal, the first shipment of LNG out of the U.S. is going to be coming up in about a month uh, wow. uh, okay. down at Chenier Energy. So, okay. Man, you know, all this volatility at a time where, you know, there's kind of this quote-unquote great crew change happening in the marketplace as well. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm always curious to know from an educational standpoint, what, what are you guys seeing in that? Uh, you know, I know, um, Jack, you've said some companies have reached out to you guys to kind of help foster an environment of new talent, new knowledge, new resources coming up. Uh, what, what's your what's your insight on this great crew change? Well, part, um, well, actually, I was part of the great crew change. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, right? With 30, how many years? Yeah. At, at 35 years. 35 years with at Texaco Shell? and Chevron Texaco. Yeah, okay, and okay. So I retired in 2003, and, 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 and all my career I've been working with um, younger people and students. And so what I really wanted to try to do is to see um, what could be done in, in, in education. And... The, the issue is that um, the universities do a fantastic job in the principles, but the applications of those principles are not really learned until you have tremendous amount of uh, experience in the oil and gas industries. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we were what we looked what I looked at was what can we do in education to try to maybe alter this a little bit and start looking at the demographics so by teaching, I, I, I quickly learned that the current way of learning is different than it was in the, um, in the 60s um, when I was learning. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's a whole different approach. And some of that was um, sort of more computers, more visual aspects than, than the, um, the book learning. So then we, we I looked at well we have this great crew change where there's a lot of people with experience that that want to contribute mm -hmm, right. and there's a lot of people trying to learn and how do you try to match these together and how do you try to do something in order to integrate sort of the the computer knowledge for, and and the way of new looking at education versus the um the experience right. and the great crew change I think is a fantastic opportunity. For um, for people in that to um, contribute to to the community, a lot of times the when when I left Texaco and Chevron Texaco, I wanted to teach, but I didn't have any of the materials to, okay. to teach, right. and so it was a it was a huge problem. So the question, um, which we can discuss later, is how do you try to marry that together, and and how do you try to um, tap into the um, fantastic resources that are out there? A lot of people who retire still are very interested in in and helping the communities. And when I would go to meetings and, and um, for different societies and people would go around and say, what do you want to do? Most of them said, I want to help in education. But right. there was no way to try to do that. Yeah, what's the outlet for that? How are we going to get in front of that next generation coming up? Right. I, mean, I can only imagine. I mean, just think about all the insight, you know, not just like the experience, but 35 years working somewhere. I mean, the leadership, you know, I mean, all the case studies, all the projects that you've worked on, being able to recall things, you know, just, you know, front of mind. 
uh, rather than had to reinvent the wheel. Galena, was this something that was on your mind when you started? You said you initially started volunteering um, with PTI, right? Um, was this crew change something that was on your mind, or was it more of the the overall focus of the of the group? Well, it, it was also part of it. It was part of a deal. Uh, another thing we were thinking about that within the industry, uh, there is also a significant change in the way of companies uh, approaching the projects. Uh, uh, early days when we were studying uh, and then entering the industries. Um, the approach was discipline-based, and uh, each discipline, let's say professionals in uh, geology, geophysics, didn't talk too well to engineers, So, and they didn't understand each other uh, mm. approach. Okay. So nowadays, uh, technology is developed, and uh, companies are looking in uh, integrated team approach. So what is integrated team if you know your discipline really well, and you have to understand the drivers of another disciplines. You have right. to understand when, uh, at which stage of the project you have to be involved and in how you can contribute right. uh, in order to be more efficient as a company. So this, uh, yeah, that's a very serious uh, aspect and opportunity for uh, experienced people to share their expertise with young generation. Absolutely. You know, what I think is really neat, and we, we talk about business plans and helping entrepreneurs, and people are always saying, you know, where's opportunity? How do you find it? I mean, you guys have found it right here just through kind of a, you know, a natural progression through your own careers and what you've been involved in. But you guys really found an industry. You found where there was a, a, a gap. You found where there's a need or a weakness. And you said, hey, you know, I think we have some resources here. We can partner together to build a platform, a resource for this industry to, to meet this need. Um, you know, so if you're listening and, and you find yourself in that situation, Situation where you're thinking about uh, stepping out. I mean, think, listen to the research. Think, listen to the thought process that went into what it is that these two organizations have come together. And I guess the common thread here, if we are going to give uh, give away the the hint here as we start talking about this new platform you guys have done, is this crew change? Is this knowledge transfer in facilitating um, a platform to help with that continued education and kind of I guess the speed of education, right? For uh, for the young guys entering the marketplace. Absolutely. Um, what started off with doing a magazine to Together. You guys have now kind of branched into some new things. Maybe who wants to kick off? Tell us a little bit about the Offshore Learning Center. Originally, it was, like we said earlier, an outgrowth of the charts and posters that we did. Uh, Kurt Albaugh, who was the, the editor for those for the magazine, um, a phenomenal guy, uh, very sharp. And he had developed some e-books for us where he was putting together for the posters articles and videos that he had found online in the public domain that could be all put together so people wanting to learn about mooring systems would have a single source to go look at. Then he started, uh, had been working with the University of Houston, so I'll let Jack pick up there. Right. He, what, what happened then What was we decided to try to do a a um, poster on mooring systems with the students at the university. And although some had experience, they, they did not have sufficient experience in order to, to do the poster very effectively and efficiently. So after about two years, when we finally <laughs> published the poster, and, and which was published in, I think, something like September 2013, and and so we we were talking about that and and we felt well the poster may not be the best route but what we had learned was that um in in teaching some of the companies we had the um the students uh look up videos about different projects and big different a issues ah, okay and 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 they put together an ebook. Um, Kurt helped us with the ebook concept, and and they put together um, video packages. And we we thought, well, maybe that might be a a good way to to try to um, integrate and to to um, proceed. And so Kurt, I think, pub um, had a, a a beta test or a test on on subsea. Um, systems, I think, and and it was on um, listed on the posters, and it got a lot of hits, and and it was used by various companies. So we thought, okay, well, let's try to do some more uh, on this 
on this idea and um and we felt well that's going to be really beneficial because we can use the students to um to do the research for us right yeah now, and then they're of that generation you know i mean there's probably perhaps no better way to convey a message nowadays than with video especially with this younger generation and that was another way that that they could actually get their um their names in print because we we referenced the the research students that did it and we had ah, right yeah yeah and we actually go, go and um uh, Glenn uh, s- or organized uh, a number of volunteers because we had we sort of tried to um, get as many people as we could. The students learned tremendously because they learned more again about the applications and about different different issues. The companies um, that w- we used the videos from was a, a way. They're they're all YouTube. It's a free website. We had lots of different um, values to to create within this um, video collections. Yep. And so um, not only was it just the um, videos, but we referenced the posters and, and the um, articles from Offshore Magazine, as well as um, uh, some webcasts and, and, and webinars. Yeah, you know, I love it. You guys are kick, pulling the, the oil and gas industry in the 21st century. I love it. We're going to talk a little bit more. Jason Arsmont, the marketing maverick with Josh Reno. Here yeah, we take a quick break and come back and learn more about the OLC, the Offshore Learning Center, right here on The Hook. Well, I caught my wife with another man and it caught... And we're back with the hook, branding and marketing, and more oil and gas. gas. That's right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jason R. right there, the marketing maverick. I'm Josh Reno, and we had a little com- conversation over the break time uh, about the whole ebook thing that we've been talking about. Yeah, just to wrap, just bring back in. We are here with uh, Professor Jack Christensen, uh, Galena Sheridan of University of Houston, as well as Mark Peters with Offshore Magazine. Yeah, we're talking about the ebook. We're talking about the posters. We're talking about some aggregation of videos and knowledge. Let's go ahead and put it out there. We're talking about the offshore learning center. What is the Offshore Learning Center? It originally started, and it is still a collection of six video, or 280 videos segregated into six categories that are important to the offshore industry. We have subsea processing, major deep water projects. We have um, offshore mooring systems, subsea production systems, heavy marine transport vessels, and offshore drilling rigs. Wow. Each of these, um, you could find the videos, but it'd take you an awful long time uh, if you went out and looked for them here. They're all grouped within these categories, and then we tie in articles that have appeared in Offshore Magazine and posters and charts that we've done over the years that are germane to these topics, too. This has helped significantly in making it easy for people, if they have an interest in the subsea production system, to get a quick education on what is actually being done out in the industry by looking at videos absolutely and, and then reading the articles when something sparks their interest because yeah. there's only so much i mean i don't know i know for me of my generation it seems like there's only so much you can learn when you're you're just reading but when you get you know kind of firsthand experience through video i mean that's just you know completely uh, that's just so valuable so what is the web address where if people are listening where how do they go where do they go the easiest way is just go to www.offshore-mag dot com. Okay. And there'll be banners on it that link you right into the Offshore Learning Center. Okay. All right. Or and just Google it. Just Google it. There we go. Yeah, I like it's that. Come on, right? Line. <laughs> Which they probably have already because we've been teasing around what this uh, Offshore Learning Center is this whole show, but I love it. So just Google it. You can check that out. So what are some of the resources? Uh, you know, I know we're talking about video, but what else? We still have the traditional posters on here as well? Yes, and they are like I said, put in the proper categories so that if you're you're watching a video in the subsea production and it's of interest, you can find our subsea production and processing poster available there in a PDF format for download if you want it. Okay. What else do we have? Now we've got the the ebooks. Oh, Galina, you want to tell us a little bit about these the ebooks? I know they're probably a little bit different than what our listeners may be thinking of a traditional ebook. 
Yes, uh, well, idea of short learning center kind of was the continuation of ebook idea. And ebook, uh, different uh, folks understand it differently. So some people saying that we are talking about books, so you can just uh, turn pages uh, on your iPad uh, if possible while right. waiting <laughs> at the airport. But it's not. The structure of ebook uh, allows a huge volume of information be accessible within two, three clicks away. And uh, this is a consultant validation of knowledge and really, really uh, opportunity to learn fast and to access information fast. For instance, we had a a project with Energy Rubber Group uh, to uh, consolidate all their accumulated materials for like 20 years of conferences wow. and, uh, <laughs> you know, why the paper, technical paper and scientific research papers. So, and we did that and the uh, members like it, love it. They access it online and they can get information uh, very easy. So this allows people to really, really learn quickly. And it's interactive is, is what you're saying. So you don't have to do the typical page flip because you said one of these books was 22,000 pages, right? Absolutely, yes, okay, even but I guess more, because plus, digital, videos, plus, yeah, plus okay. videos, plus uh, schedules, plus other things uh, we usually put into e-books, uh, huge content, two, three clicks away only. So, and it's uh, our students were doing that, and we were leading them uh, while the project, and we involve the subject matter experts whenever we need industry advice and expertise. Awesome. And I know, uh, Jack, you had mentioned earlier that where you guys started doing videos. Tell us a little bit more. So what can we expect or how are you guys aggregating all this video data or knowledge? What we do is the students first have to understand what they're looking for. We try to use the students because it's um, at the university we want the students to um, learn more on the application side. So the students we have, um, we try to get volunteers as well as students that that we, um, we pay as research students and they go out, and, and first they have to learn about the subject. So for let's say for the drilling rigs, they have to go out and learn the different types of drilling rigs. And then they have to go and um, sort through um, all the YouTube to try to find out the best videos. Wow. And then they <laughs> categorize them, and, and then people, their, their teams tend to vote on them. And then they show them to Galena, um, Kurt, myself, and we, we sort of look at them, and then we go to the subject matter experts right. who will who will make sure oh, that kind they of vet are it the... out. Okay, okay. So these are other companies' videos. So you guys are kind of going out, aggregating just kind of data that's already out there, and pulling together and vetting what you guys deem is uh, is credible and is correct. I guess correct. What can provide the best educational aspects? Okay, for, okay. for um. For, for the people. And the importance of that is, is as Galena was mentioning, in the older times, it was discipline-based teams. Mm. And now the teams are, are basically um, integrated asset teams. And so you have people, let's say like geologists, engineers, and different people within the teams. And by looking at the videos, you can start to understand what the other groups Right, get everybody out not, of their box, right? You, Stop working in a silo. Right, and you yeah. can start to, to and, and be more efficient on your mm-hmm. integrated project teams. So how many videos, you guys have obviously already started this. It was When was this originally launched? It was back we, in... In May at OTC. Okay. Was okay. the official launch date. And you guys have already gone through... A ton of videos and have them posted ton, up, right? Absolutely ton. Uh, that's very true. Uh, right now, uh, we have about two, 280 videos online. Wow. Okay. Yes, but we are working on updates and number of videos will grow. Uh, however, I, I have to say that while we and our students are doing research, so we have to watch through tremendous number of videos. It doesn't mean that all of them will be in the collection. We select okay. the best. So usually it's about maybe maybe 50%, maybe 30, 20% of what we can find uh, regarding each topic. So I think this is very important. Uh, it helps us to keep a sort of quality of the video collection to keep very high. Yeah. Well, and if you guys do what you did with the posters, if you do that with videos, I mean, we'll have just uh, probably millions of videos here very shortly because I, I know you guys have done like over 16 years. I mean, how many posters have you guys done over the years? Uh, we've uh, printed and distributed 4 million posters. 4 million. See, I saw the number, but I didn't want to yeah. say because I thought it was a misprint. <laughs> okay, so it is 4 million. Wow, yes. that's unbelievable. Yeah, market need for sure, right? 
So I guess one of the key things here too, so Galena, what you were saying is that you'll be able to come to somewhere on the site, uh, select that topic, and then within that topic, you can see the posters, the eBooks, the videos, all within kind of one area or one space. Is it, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, we come with a topic based on recommendation from Offshore Magazine because they are working on the market, they have global approach, they have Absolutely. all this understanding. They really, I mean, I have to say that each company in the industry receives Offshore Magazine and posters are used, I think, as a very good resource and reference tool. Yeah, they're in every major uh, conference room you ever go to within this yes. industry, right? I know as a marketing firm, we, we go to oil and gas groups all the time, and there's always the, you know, there's the posters, and everyone gets to point out where uh, where they're at on that poster, and it's it's a, definitely a resource that's utilized Right, and, and when we industry. need a topic, when we decide on topic, so we definitely look uh, up to Offshore Magazine for their recommendation, and then we start working within our collection, and we uh, work on the structure of this collection. We use, uh, of course, uh, reference materials ourselves, uh, and the articles we include in our collection, they are not just articles, they are featured articles, and a majority of them uh, actually include the forecast, uh, technology trends, and the industry perspective, industry overview. In other words, big picture. Right. So, right. and we also rely mainly on educational materials, not okay. advertising. Got it. Yeah, I mean, there just sounds like just a wealth of data and knowledge here. We're going to talk a little bit about um, who can benefit from this and who's, who can come use and uh, use this platform as a resource. As soon as we get back, we got a quick break. I feel like this is uh, the Whitney Houston song, I Believe the Children Are Our Future. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. Oh, oh, Whitney Houston throwback there. We just, got, we just got to inform them, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but I mean, all of this in one place – that's a big deal. It's a powerhouse, man. And, and the no fact doubt. that it's it's available and now they know that it's available and, and bringing uh, the younger generation up through this is very, very important. Well, so. I told our listeners we weren't going to do an oil and gas show until we had a powerful one. No doubt what these guys are doing is uh, going to be a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back next with more right here on The Hook. You know what? Well, I'm a chicken fry. We're back with The Hook. Very entertaining show this week because there's just so much information, all the resources, everything in one place. And my name is Josh Reno. I think that we should have had maybe a different line of work that we got into. <laughs> Learning from all this. <laughs> yeah. I might leave. Just so much opportunity. I might so leave Brightbox and go somewhere else. Yeah, well, I'm a lot of saying. our clients are in this space, so we've got, we've got a little bit of know-how here. Not too much to go against uh, the, our guest today. We've got Professor Jack Christensen and Galena Sheridan with University of Houston and Mark Peters with Offshore Magazine. We've been talking about the Offshore Learning Center, uh, unbelievable resource, an aggregate of knowledge and data about offshore applications and processes. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about um, what the Offshore Learning Center is. I guess, you know, so who can benefit? Who's allowed to use this? Is this an open source or how do people get connected with it? Who, who can benefit from it? Pretty much anyone who's new to the industry and wants to learn something, there's absolutely no charge. It is geared more to new engineers who are coming into the industry okay. uh, to help train them at the oil companies and, and students, college-level students, but also um, elementary and high school students would find it, some items of interest, too. Yeah, I think Jack said 11-year-old, his neighbor was <laughs> clicking through the site and uh, found some uh, benefit from it and could figure it out. So that's, that's awesome. Well, so um, I asked uh, my neighbor, who has an 11-year-old daughter, and, and um, pointed her to one of the videos, and she, she looked at it, and, and she stayed to the end of it, and, and she, she enjoyed it as well as her mom. So that sort of brought it down because I've also talked at high school level to a, a group, um, the IPA, the Independent Association of Petroleum Producers, which, which huh. is a very large group, and their educational director, Ann Ford, um, looked at it, and she thought it would be great for the high schools. There's there are some energy-related high schools in Houston, and, and right, four right. in Houston, and one in Dallas-Fort Worth area, and, and she felt that that, that would be good for them. So, oh, yeah. I mean, so, I can only imagine. I mean, so many of the guidance counselors probably don't have you know, kind of the breadth of knowledge about all the opportunities within this market space. You know, it's like, oh, we'll just go, uh, go to school, become a petroleum engineer. It's like, 
well, then what? You know, what, what do you do? So, yeah, I can imagine sharing this with those high school students. You know, kind of relating back to that, I grew up in Louisiana, and I would say about 75% of the people that I went to school with, that was their chosen field, and they still do that to this day. None of this was around whenever I went to high yeah, school. Yeah, can you imagine? I All mean, of the resources available in one place, it would have been a game changer. Yeah. That's so, amazing. Yeah, so I, I guess, you know, it makes sense for individuals to come on if they're entering into the market space to learn a little bit more and kind of get uh, some you know, just hands-on experience with it. But do, are you guys seeing companies come to use it? Is this um, just a Houston base or Gulf Coast thing or – What's that I, I just been? think that uh, this uh, offshore learning center can benefit uh, almost everybody. I mean, the technology is absolutely amazing. Uh, I just uh, think that the main population doesn't really know that well about it. Right. I mean, the technology right now uh, applied in deep water can be only compared to the spaceship uh, technologies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and it is it is amazing. I mean, and it's amazing if you want to learn about the energy industry or just uh, self-development, uh, you know, just to learn for yourself, to, to know more about uh, life, about interest. So I also want to mention that um, subject matter experts who are involved in disease collection development with us, uh, they may have like 30, 35, 40 years of industry experience. However, when they look through these videos, they say, wow, <laughs> yeah. wow, because... They never uh, thought, they never looked at the industry this way because they see not their their own niche where they are experts for many years, uh, not only like their team or their discipline is working, but they can see other disciplines, other topics and to, to understand how things work really. Right, right. And visually, visually we understand things much, much better. Right. Yeah. People say it's it's better one time to see than hundred yeah. times to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, unless it's a radio show. Absolutely. Unless it's <laughs> a radio show, <laughs> then you can hear and you can learn everything. Right. Right. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's just so awesome. I mean, and I, I've met engineers and folks within oil and gas companies who haven't even had some of that on site application, you know, kind of that experience. And so I'm sure, yeah, just an engineering marvel, right? What we're able to do within this oil and gas uh, sector, especially offshore and some of the, the deep drilling stuff. Um, so so what kind of reach has this site had so far? I mean, I know you guys have kind of soft launched it. We were talking about that earlier, but um, so far it's been, been taken off pretty good. Well, we uh, were working for a long time to launch these six collections. Uh, we work on more, but to launch these six collections, we decided to do it during offshore technology conference at the beginning of May 2015. Okay. So within these, um, how many, six, about six months, uh, we actually have a few hits in May. However, in October, we have more than 7,500 hits. In October, right. wow. we know that the total um, visitors uh, of our offshore learning center now are numbered uh, as uh, 60,000. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> clo close to it, maybe over 60,000 yeah. visitors. And we also know that uh, visitors are coming from 54 countries around the world. Wow. Wow. Yes. And all we, we know all that because, again, Offshore Magazine set up a special, very informative, extremely comprehensive reports we receive every week. So we can see all these numbers and, mm -hmm. and track them and see how we can maybe improve something or make some changes and adjustments. So mm -hmm. how do I'm sure being the marketing guy, companies are going to be listening to this and say, man, you know, I would I'd like some of my videos to be in there. Is, is there a formal process for how they can maybe get their videos to be part of that uh, particular library or is it kind of have to happen naturally or is there well there is a formal process we do have feedback to suggest videos but then it goes through the vetting process that jack was talking okay. about earlier okay is, and, they, and they need to be on youtube yes and and public access Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, we're always telling our clients, get on YouTube, share your videos anyway. So that's good. So we need to encourage everybody to get out there and put their knowledge, their, uh, you know, their job application stuff on YouTube and uh, get that stuff out there. So that's probably the best way. And then is there a section on the site where they can contact you guys and recommend new topics or recommend videos for, for submission? Yeah, so there, there, there's a um, there, there's a link to a page that has comments, and and we we have quite a few comments 
already around okay. the world and people that that um, suggest videos or suggest things and ah. and so it's it's quite um, it's been quite popular. I think I think one 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 aspect I just wanted to make sure that. that we find this is a good niche in education when you have both the principles that are taught in the in the university. The university um, focus is more on first principles and the technical uh, details, okay. and this gives applications. Mm-hmm. So it's actually very complementary of, of the two approaches with, mm-hmm. within the universities and within um, the offshore learning center. So we, we wanted to make sure it was – we create we create value and we don't repeat and 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 do something that isn't valuable to to the industry and so far we've had i think we've had good um feedback that is it's in it, the industry is is embracing it yeah and so there's six topics on there right now or six collections um so you guys are looking to continue to add more that that's correct right i think we, you guys are thinking a couple every like how often every, about every six months okay okay Man, that's just a lot of data. So these these students are churning out a lot of work. <laughs> that's very true. We also uh, update existing collections. We keep an eye on existing okay. collections, and uh, we see that there are new videos uh, become available on YouTube, and we uh, we take them, include into the collection, and we rate them. So we compare uh, okay. them with okay. existing videos. If they are better, so we substitute. Or if they show, uh, let's say, another perspective, so we just simply add them. Uh, I also want to mention that what kind of videos we are talking about. Sure. So we we really like operational videos. Companies, uh, you know, they film their operations and they put these videos online. That's uh, absolutely excellent. Uh, Amazing thing is when operational videos are combined with uh, animation because mm, let's right. say we see um, operations on the surface of the water and uh, we are talking about offshore operations. So and then when equipment goes underwater, sometimes are you know difficult to see. So animation comes in into play and shows you and explains you how things really work yep. and how yep. they are going. So another type of videos we are interested in, uh, just uh, presentations, lectures, or some uh, documentary. Okay. Because it's also amazing, and uh, well, you can see these uh, regular videos, they are not too long, or you can uh, dive uh, down into uh, documentaries, right. which are much longer usually, but you can learn more and uh, understand uh, better each topic. That's awesome. Yeah, just a wealth of knowledge. I mean, I know there's there's so much more to talk about. I want to encourage all the listeners to go Google it, right? Go Google, Google. Offshore Learning Center. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> go check it out. Um, you know, I'd like to ask if you guys could come back in a couple weeks. Maybe we'll give our listeners a chance to go through the site. We'll go through the site in detail and maybe have you guys back. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the, the resources that are on here, how people can engage and get involved, um, you know, and use this platform. It's, it's, uh, it's obviously going to be a game changer. If uh, you guys are open to it, we'd love to have you back. It'd be our pleasure. S- Sounds great. Awesome. Awesome. It, it, Thank just you so much. Another That'd party. We have you. another party right here just at the another station. Another party. <laughs> <laughs> and invite yeah. you over to come. Another yeah. weekend party here with my oil and gas friends. Yeah. I'm talking about resources and free stuff. <laughs> so yeah. uh, thanks again for joining us. And I know next week we have a, uh, another action packed show. C- Every week is an action-packed show. Maybe not like this. Next week is a little different. Next week it's all about uh, t- cigars. We've got Diane Grace from uh, the Briar Shop. Okay. Houston's oldest tobacco shop. It's going to be here in studio with us. So Fantastic. And you can always check us out on the website. If you missed this whole show, you can listen back because we have the archives up, the podcast, and uh, iHeartRadio is where you check us out live if uh, we're ever cut off or if you're ever out of town. So uh, join us back next week. Jason Arsmite there, the Marketing Maverick. I'm Josh Reno right here on The Hook. Have a great weekend.